Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ben Reeve, uh, and there's some big news in AFL in the last uh, 24 hours, 36 hours. Adam Simpson, coach of the West Coast Eagles, or former coach now, uh, has been sacked. Uh, well, mutual agreement, they're saying. Uh, I guess this was coming for a little while. I, I, I wanted to give my thoughts a little bit about Adam Simpson, I suppose, but probably more generally around the coach sacking and the experience of that and how clubs manage that. Uh, I don't like the way West Coast handled the Adam Simpson situation. I think it was really messy probably for the last 18 months, really. Um, I mean, the, and just the execution of the his termination uh, over the last uh, 48 hours, yeah, a little bit messy for my liking. I, I just thought it didn't look good from an outsider looking in. Um, clearly, we're not privy to those conversations that are happening internally and, and how they arrived at those decisions and how much uh, of a mutual agreement it was. Uh, often that's usually a phrasing to, uh, that's used to keep everyone happy, I suppose, to save some face. And uh, usually it's one person, one party over the other making making the call. Um, but, yeah, look, a premiership coach for the West Coast Eagles, um, one of three for them. Uh, probably, I think the second, almost the th almost equal to Mick Malthouse in terms of second most games coached for their club, I think third in the third in the end. He, he took them to two grand finals over 11 years. Uh, so he's been a great coach. He, he's, he seems like a good bloke too. Um, and it's a bit sad the way it's all come to an end, but uh, you – Pretty much could see the writing was on the wall. I think most AFL fans saw this one coming. Um, and just with the way West Coast uh, struggling to really turn around their fortunes, pretty much since um, COVID, really, um, they really, really struggled through that period there and probably had the wrong attitude towards everything, uh, whereas a lot of other clubs, well, not maybe half the clubs probably took a different approach. It'll be fine. We'll, we'll get through this together. We'll make it work, whatever it takes. Um, but West Coast probably didn't have the right mental approach. And um, I wouldn't say that's cost them. I think injuries is, has been a significant one and just some decisions they've made around recruitment as well uh, haven't really worked out for them. So, unfortunately, it looks like Adam Simpson's the man that's it's copped the whack, going to cop the whack and has copped the whack for that and uh, is no longer coach of the West Coast Eagles. He has been offered the chance to coach them for a final time uh, this weekend against Brisbane. It's a home game, so a chance for for him to say farewell from the coach's box. How does that really work? I don't know. <laughs> He's not really going to be engaging with the fans too much from the coach's box. I guess he'll walk onto the ground at some point and the fans will clap him off when he comes um, up to run back to the box again, but that's, that's about it. Um, maybe they'll cheer him off. I don't think he'll do it, though. I mean, interested to hear your thoughts, but I think once you've made that decision... It's pretty hard to front up again. Like when your boss tells you you don't, they don't want you anymore to come into work for the next week. It's pretty tough. Often you see people like resign immediately for that reason. It's like it's it's embarrassing. It's it's not a great feeling. He must be feeling right now. Him and his family and all those people close to him. So um, I, I, I'm sure there's a lot of players that that want him to be there for one more one more week. Uh, and to give him a farewell that he, he rightfully deserves. But whether he wants that or not, whether he just says, well, it's just easier if I just go now, uh, doesn't mean I'm never going to talk to these people at the club ever again, but um, it's now. We've made the decision. It's time for me to move on. So um, I don't know. Whatever he chooses to do, wish him well. Uh, Jake uh, from the Hoops crew and I were chatting on our News Wrap episode today on Patreon. Uh, we were wondering whether Geelong might look to offer him a role in some capacity uh, in future at the club in a, maybe an assistant coaching role. Uh, Jake probably thinks he's more likely to go back to North Melbourne. Uh, he did serve for a period of time under Alistair Clarkson at Hawthorne, so uh, they might look to reunite again until he decides what he wants to do. I know he's a little bit unsure about whether he wants the responsibilities uh, that he's been dealing with, talking about 100 decisions a day and wanting a bit of time away from from those processes and that, that level of responsibility and assistant coach you can make a hundred suggestions in a day, but you don't have to make too many decisions. So, um, so maybe assistant coaching for him for a year or two or three is, might be the where he wants to go. Maybe he's done with senior coaching as well. Not everyone uh, wants to throw their hat in the ring for a second time. It's not. It's not for everyone. Uh, I don't know how they do it. I don't know how any coach does it. Um, 
but yes, yeah, so look, I really wanted to, I wanted to touch on that clearly, but I also just wanted to give my thoughts into how you manage these things and, and probably also when's the right time to go as well. So there's a few coaches that I'll start with. There's some, I'll go through some names of coaches that I think are probably under pressure or probably the, the five or six coaches that I think under the most pressure at the moment. You may or may not agree with, with these names, but I'll run through a couple. I think Matthew Nix at Adelaide, I don't think he's proven anything and I don't think he's uh, got enough of a resume to guarantee himself a long-term extension or anything like that. Chris Fagan at Brisbane, he's been a fantastic coach for them, but is um, what happens if Brisbane fall away uh, the last few weeks of this year and, and depart finals pretty soon? I, I think they'll stick with him, um, but maybe they'll look in another direction as well, possibly. Um, I don't probably I'll probably get harsh on Chris Fagan to be fair he maybe shouldn't be in this group of names but um but you know maybe Brisbane have tailed off a bit and he's been with them for a little while now so maybe they might look in another direction or he might as well uh Ken Hinckley's the one that probably should be at the top of this list uh what 10 years or 11 years something like that um uh, at Port Adelaide hasn't taken them to a grand final uh probably a prelim or two in there I'm thinking from memory uh well, he seems like a lot, under a lot of pressure at the moment. Got emotional uh, when he was interviewed after a game a few weeks back. Uh, had a win last week, which was good for him. Um, but, yeah, the, the pressure will come back on him very, very soon. So he's one that I think is probably more likely to to move on before anyone else. Uh, some other names. Uh, I think Simon Goodwin. I think Melbourne will turn on their coaches pretty soon, <laughs> on him pretty soon, uh, if, if the results keep down going their way. I think they've had a... I don't know. I'm hearing rumblings around that place. I don't want to say too much, but yeah, I don't know. I don't like a lot of what I've heard really uh, going on behind closed doors at Melbourne. And they've had a few injuries as well. And, you know, a lot of clubs get injuries and injuries and so forth, but um, might be time that they look elsewhere, uh, especially if Melbourne keeps going on that downward trajectory. Uh, another couple, Ross Lyon at St Kilda, they thought he was going to be the saviour. Saints might turn it around next year. I thought this was going to be the year they'd push uh, for a grand final. It just didn't happen. Um, the way he coaches, or well, historically the way he's coached, uh, he often gets teams up and about in the first couple of years and then there's a big drop-off. So I think we're already seeing it uh, and maybe his message isn't isn't sinking through as much as it does, did in previous years. Uh, in 2024, a different generation of uh, players coming through, maybe the the voice isn't really as effective uh, for him. Uh, and the last one for me is Luke Beveridge. He's sort of up and, you know, at one point you think he's gone and the next minute the Bulldogs come back and they look great again and be charging for September. But uh, now, similar to Brisbane, if they drop off uh, over the next month or two and maybe miss finals or whatever, you think that's probably the end for him, probably one that might finish up at the end of the year. So, so yeah, there's a, there's a few coaches there probably in the gun. Maybe you don't agree with those, all of those names, but um, – but yeah, I'd say it wouldn't take a lot to go wrong for some of these coaches to get a tap on the shoulder and say, oh, yeah, it's your get. So um, I don't know how what would happen if that, yeah, which ones of those could go, but you'd say a few of them are probably at the end of the year or if not before the end of the year might be on their way out. I reckon there's some coaches, though, uh, that have got a little bit more time under their sleeves regardless of the results. Uh, and I think Alistair Clarkson hasn't really gone as well as, well as they wanted it to at North. Uh, on the field and off the field, mind you. Um, but he's one that probably gets a bit of time, I'd say, because of his uh, history with winning premierships, four premierships with the Hawks. Uh, Brad Scott at Essendon, he's done pretty well so far. The Bombers look like they're on the right path. Um, but they're also a team that strikes me as they could go backwards just as quickly as well. So um, wait and see on the Bombers over a two- or three-year period how they go. Uh, Justin Longmuir at Frio, he's doing pretty well. I think not, not a lot of us expected Frio to do that well this year. So he's done it. Fairly well, um, but similar to the Bombers, I feel like Freo could drop off pretty quick too if, if things don't go quite well. But prove me wrong, Freo. Uh, I, I can never pick you in the footy tipping. Damien Harwick seems to have a ticket for five years. He's, he's going to be there a long term, a long time. Um, he's getting pretty grumpy the other day, um, but I think that's probably what Gold Coast need, a bit of tough love. Uh, they've had it too easy up there, uh, out of the spotlight, so um, hopefully they'll turn things around in the last couple of months and, and push for the finals. Adam Kingsley, I think he's going to be okay. I think I like what I see from him. I think the players like him, a GWS coach. He should be fine, you'd imagine. I wouldn't imagine there's too much to worry about there. Uh, Sam Mitchell, Hawthorne, their Hawks are on the way up. You'd think they're going to be pretty uh, competitive in the next two or three years. 
I'll probably will start pushing for finals. Not this year, I wouldn't have thought, but uh, definitely into next year unless something really bad goes wrong. Um, and whether they push for a top four at some stage, who knows? It might depend on health issues and and uh, with players and the list management and so forth and whether they're a destination club all over again. But, um, yeah, we'll see. But I'd say they're on the right path. I don't like the bloke, clearly, Hawthorne. Uh, but uh, I think they're on the right track. And Adam Uze for Richmond. I think he's got a bit of time, um, but Richmond currently 18th on the ladder, rock bottom. Um, they'd want to turn things around a little bit next year. Um, I'll, I think he's got two years. <laughs> we'll see what happens after that. But just to round out, there's some coaches that are absolutely rock solid. If they want to go, that's totally on their, their call at this point. The club's nowhere near looking to move them on, and that's John Longmuir. Sorry, John Longmire uh, from Sydney. Uh, Chris Scott, clearly at the Cattery. He can, he can you know decide when he wants to go. He can be there another 20 years if he wants. Uh, Michael Voss from Carlton. Now, you wouldn't have said that maybe a couple of years ago, but I think now he's pretty solid there at Carlton. And uh, Craig McRae at Collingwood uh, easily could turn the ship around next year and then go again for another premiership. Carlton, sorry, Collingwood seems to find a way every few years to, to be at the competitive pointy end of the season again. So, um, so I think I'll start with that bottom group of those rock-solid coaches. What would they – I think – when is it when is it appropriate for these guys to to move on? Can you stay too long as a coach of a club, even though you might be doing really well, having a lot of success on the field, really like the place that you're working at? Do you want to stay too long that eventually you get sacked, or do you want to leave on your own terms? Um, and I think about this a little bit with Chris Scott, and I'm definitely not someone who's trying to uh, to sack Chris Scott or start a campaign to get rid of Chris Scott. I, I actually want him to stay with Geelong for another ten years. But like a lot of like a lot of senior players, I don't want to see them get pushed out. Uh, I don't think they deserve that. Um, they definitely deserve the uh, the right to make the call themselves. But sometimes, sometimes players and coaches don't always know when that right time is, or, or think um, that they've got a little bit longer than they have. So, um, Chris Scott, I think, is probably one where he'll he'll see the. He'll keep asking those questions. And, again, we talked about this on our news wrap show today with Jake on Patreon. But uh, I think Chris Scott will keep asking those questions of people he trusts at the club and the players in leadership roles. And he'll he'll ask them whether they think he's the right person for the job. Now, they might just keep telling him, yes, you're great because they love him. Um, then he might have to make that decision on his own at some point in time. But I don't think the time's come yet. Uh, I, I feel like if he's going to move it'll uh, of his own accord, it'll be in the next few years when – when the Tassie team looks more likely, there will, there will be a lot of movement, not necessarily saying he's going to Tassie, but you'd imagine around that time when Tassie comes in, there'll be a bit of a shuffling of the coaches. Uh, so that would be an interesting time. Um, so there'll be a bit of money fl- uh, thrown around as well. He's a coach with two premierships, so you'd think so there. I think John, um, John Longmire from Sydney, um, I think they'll probably look at a transition model uh, for him, maybe a, a, an assistant, senior assistant coach under him. Dean Cox is currently being floated as a possibility. They're a bit worried that he might be asked to be headhunted for the West Coast job. Um, he's a possibility as well. Um, I think Chris Scott and John Longmire are at the top of the tree for me. I think they should stay as long as they want to. Uh, they've proven they've done everything they, they can do in the game. Uh, John Longmire could be looking at another premiership at the end of this year. Uh, Chris Scott might be looking at another premiership this year or in the next three years, potentially. Um, and then you're looking at uh, Michael Voss and Craig McRae, Carlton Collingwood coaches. I think uh, Craig McRae's clearly already proven himself. Um, you know, players seem to love him. Um, was it just a – was it just everything go right for Collingwood that year? They won the premiership and they won it by a kick uh, or two. Um, you know, I think he should be okay. I think he's probably – I think he should be fine. Carlton, Carlton turned on their coaches pretty quickly, though. But um, Michael Voss, um, I think he's turned that place around pretty well. And, and Brian Cook, the CEO, as well. Um, I think Carlton are looking pretty good on and off the field. I think they should be fine. Michael Voss should uh, – He's this year he's been good and last year he's been as a good coach. Uh, hopefully he'll have five or six years longer to go at Carlton and, and do some things with that club. They're probably long overdue for a premiership or at least some grand final uh, – appearances that'll be the way to go for them so yeah i think that group uh, can probably choose what they want to do i don't see michael voss or craig mccray moving anytime soon i think chris scott and john longmire will be asking themselves the question at some point in time 
Um, how long is too long to stay at a club? And I hope that they make the choice themselves. I don't want the club to be able to, again, tap them on the shoulder and go, guys, we need to we need to move on. We need a different voice. Hopefully they're the ones that make that choice. And whether it's to retire or do something else or step into an administrative role or a football manager type role um, or media or whatever it is, um, hopefully that's on their terms and it's not something they're pushed out of the club because they don't really deserve that. So, um, you know, win two premierships, um, you know, it, you deserve a bit of love, and especially if you're still successful, um, go out on your own terms. Uh, it's tricky to transition, though. I mean, you want to leave with someone else ready to step in. It's not always possible. It doesn't always work either. It did work with John Longmire and, and Paul Ruse, uh, worked pretty seamlessly, but um, you don't see that happening elsewhere too much. Oh, I guess Paul Roos and Simon Goodwin. The Paul Roos seems to be the magic formula there. Get Paul Roos wherever you go and you'll guarantee a premiership uh, a few years later. That, that seems to be the way to go. But I'm going to jump back to the other end. Those coaches under pressure again. Um, how, and it's probably more about the, the decisions in the club's hands, really, for these ones. What does a club choose to do here? Um, how do they handle it? Like, if a, should, you, should you sack a coach during the middle of the season um, because there's another coach on the horizon there. How many times does that, you say that happen though, that a, a coach gets sacked because, oh, there's a possibility we'll get, you know, Mick Malthouse or Nathan Buckley or, um, you know, there's someone else out there. That, oh, Paul Rules, Bruce might be interested again. Um, you know, someone else has been sacked. Oh, Adam Simpson's been sacked. Maybe we should sack our coach and we can get Adam Simpson in. Um it doesn't always work that way. Uh, I think Ross Lyon was one where St Kilda sacked their coach, uh, Brett Ratton, and in comes Ross Lyon. But that doesn't – you don't see that very often really. I think it just creates carnage when, when a coach gets sacked mid-year, when a club's got designs or bringing someone else in or, or, you know, thinking, oh, if we don't sack a coach, we won't be cons- we won't be considered. So I don't know. I don't know. I, I, yeah, I think it's um, – I don't think these situations are easily – Handled anyway. I think the most thing, the most important thing you need to remember as a club, the way I see it is show respect. Like it's it's a bloody tough gig being in charge of forty young men uh, or women if you're an AFLW coach, uh, but forty elite athletes, uh, all the other pressures that come along with it, all the other, it, you're basically managing a football club. Really, yes, you've got to delegate, and there's other people in other roles and all that sort of stuff. But you know, you are the face of that club, really. Um, and you set the culture for the for the club. Uh, everything sort of goes through you, um, and how you handle that as an exec, as a uh, as a football department CEO and and the board uh, reflects on your club. Um, you know how you handle. I'll use Ken Hinckley. Um, Port Adelaide probably likely to move on from Ken at the end of the year, unless something magical happens at Port Adelaide over the next couple of months. Um, you can see he's probably the obvious one for me where hopefully they'll give him the end of the year. They'll give him every opportunity, um, but it could just as easily Port could start to struggle and uh, he, there'll be conversations. You'd, ho- you'd like to see at least an open, honest dialogue between coach and um, the exec team around where they where they sit. And, you know, if it is to be to leave early, well, that's okay as long as everyone's in agreement there and they and they show a lot of respect, especially for someone like Ken Hinckley who's been there nearly a decade or, or slightly over a decade. You, you, you expect to see a bit of respect there, even if they haven't had the ultimate success. Um, he's brought a lot of he's brought a lot of victories to that club, and um, you know, fortunately, they just haven't been able to make it work. And you can only have one team every year that wins the whole thing, and a couple that make the grand final. It's not easy, but you know, ten years. You might have to try a different direction. I guess you need, you need to, and the players are probably looking for something fresh as well at some stage. So I don't know how Port handle that one. That looks like, you know, I th- hopefully for Ken's sake, uh, former assistant coach at Geelong, hopefully for his sake, they, they give him the, at least until the end of the year and they make finals and he has every opportunity to try and make something happen in September. Um, but if it doesn't happen and they and they really struggle over the next couple or they get bundled out early in the finals, um, it probably is the right thing for the football club. And maybe even for Ken to to look elsewhere as well. I think he would leave that footy club with a lot of respect and a lot of uh, a, his reputation intact. And there would be, I would imagine, there'd be opportunities elsewhere for Ken down the line, even if he did step out of the game for a year or so. Um, yeah, Ross Lyon. How do you handle the Ross Lyon situation? I think they'll probably give him time. He's probably one in that middle group where he's got a little bit more time. But yeah, I don't know. I don't really. 
rate the St Kilda uh, powers that be too much. I think they'll turn on him pretty quickly as well, even though he was meant to be the saviour for them. So um, I don't know what do you what do you do in these situations? It's 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 messy either way how you look at it. I you just want I, I, my preference is that a coach just finishes out the year, but. It's like if you if you think about the job that you were if you are working uh, if you're working in a job and they're they're telling you all right come Christmas time you're gone is your heart really in it anymore do you really want to be there um, if the, if the employer's telling you oh well we're going to pay you out no matter what they have to pay you out no matter what uh, well I might as well leave in July what's the point being here I'm getting paid either way I might as well put my feet up and have a holiday and and start spending that time looking for another job somewhere uh, why would I why would I coach all the way to the end and and everyone, it's 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 humiliating uh, running up to work every day, knowing that everyone's looking at you, thinking, "Dead man walking, uh, you're not going to be here anymore." What what? And how how much is your message really getting through at that point as well? So um, it is it is a tough one. Anyway, I've ranted a little bit. I just wanted to get some thoughts out there uh, on the way clubs handle coaches and what I'd like to see, especially those coaches that have probably earned the right. Uh, Adam Adam Simpson is one of those that has earned the right to should have earned the right, really, to go out on his terms, or at least West Coast should have handled his departure a, a little bit um, better, I think, um, more respectfully. I really don't think they've done it that well. If they had their time again, maybe they'd look at it and, oh, we could have done this, we could have done that. Um, I think the success, probably the, the lack of wins on the board for him, really was probably enough for them to make the call, and I think everyone realised a change was needed. Simpson probably wanted to have every opportunity to keep going, but... Uh, it sounds like some players were unhappy, some key players, potentially Harley Reid, the way it was an interesting exchange between Adam Simpson and Harley Reid at the end there. Um, so I'm not sure what to read into that, but um, let me know in your com- in the comments what you think. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Just my thoughts on on coaching generally. I'm keen to know what your thoughts are on, on how these things should be handled in future. But um, I'll catch you on the next one, guys. Take care and go Cats.